five. Program number five is to design, develop, and implement a program in C for the following stack application. Again, we are trying to implement the stack here. Just evaluate the postfix expression with the single digit operands and operators. That is evaluation of postfix. That is first part. Second part is writing the recursive function for tower of one. So both we have seen in theoretical discussions. Uh, how to evaluate the postfix expression? We'll make use of the stack. We will fetch two operands. The first uh, operand will be operand two. The second operand will be operand one. Then we apply the operator, perform the calculations, again store the result onto the stack. Then whatever last value we get, that is what is the postfix expression. So this we have seen, and this also very det in detail I have explained. So let us see the specifically the function part I'll be giving now. These are the required header files. Count will be initialized to zero and top to minus one. These are the global variables which will be used in the program. Which will be used in the program. Fifth lab program, right? Operate. That means whatever the operator will get. This is the function which is used for performing corresponding operations. In case of plus, you just return operand one plus operand two. In case of minus, you just return operand one minus operand two. In case of division, division star star. In case of power operator, just return the power of operand one to the raised to operand two. Right. So this is the simple mathematics. This function is all about the simple mathematics operations. So uh, can you hear my voice? Are you connected with me till now? Because the class should not be one-sided. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why is why is clear now? Yes, sir. Good, good. Thank you. Right. Yes, this sir. is as well. Uh, this is usually for inserting an element onto the stack push function, which we already know. This is pop function for deleting out an element from the stack. Right. This is tower of one function. If you remember the tower of one function, what was told to you was one second in the tower of one function, the explanation part what was given to you was. You see, just count to uh, count the number of moments what we have done after every print. Number of moments what we have done. Right. So the. Tower of Hanai functions, briefly I will explain it once again. Right? So if you can see this device in the camera here, I hope I had explained. Can you see this properly, all of you? No? Yes, sir. I'm just, I'm just trying to show it. Can you see this? Can see right. So, what was the basic uh, uh, fundamental problem for Tower of Nine? You should move all the disks from A to C. You should be able to move, move the disk from A to C. So, what was the uh, logic what that we used? Whatever top n minus one disks are there, whatever top n minus how many disks we have? One, two, three, and four we have. Take top n minus one disk, move them from A to auxiliary. Temporary, you have to move. That is what is first statement. Is that take the n minus one disk, move them from source to the keeping other one as intermediary. No, not sorry, sorry. Move them from source to intermediary, keeping destination as the auxiliary. So what I have moved from source n minus one disk, I have moved from source to intermediary. Source to this is B is intermediary source. Destination intermediary. Then what was the next logic? Move percentage disk. Move this one disk from source to the destination. That was the logic. Move this one disk from source to the destination. Next, this will be counted for every moment. This will be counted for every moment. This function is will be called recursively. 
if you remember in the previous class i had shown that recursive call how it will get called implicitly so same way this is generic i am telling how the flow will take place again this will be recursive functions will be applied on these disks also next what you do move the n minus 1 disk move these n minus 1 disks from intermediary to the destination keeping source as the auxiliary from intermediary to the destination keeping source as the auxiliary so this i oh, hope you you can recall now which was explained in the earlier classes so the same logic is being recursively called now i will be not going into depth of this uh, how the flow will work because it was uh, it is already explained recursive call how it will get called every time we will be reaching to the end every time we will be going to the end of the solution because the property of the recursive call itself is in such a way that we should be able to reach to the end or terminating criteria we should reach the terminating criteria this is tower of an i right let us come to the main function program execution will always start from the main function so take the required variables n choice n choice i operand 1 operand 2 answer stack so all these are n choice operand 1 operand 2 right operand 1 operand 2 answer and stack so whenever you perform operand 1 and operand 2 we be able to get answer a n s answer and stack so stack is an array now what is the size of the stack it can, it can hold 50 elements so stack can hold 50 elements our stack can hold 50 elements right for understanding purpose i am just trying to show it in a larger font so this is what is our stack for explanation purpose i have taken very small number of spaces yes see is our stack right now the expression is an array which will contain the postfix expression and symbol will contain the symbol which you are going to scan symbol then expression expression for holding the postfix expression expression i'll write it here at the top expression for writing the postfix expression what we can solve right while the condition is true it is a uh, iterative procedure till you enter the values till you e enter exit value it will be repeated the same values will be displayed again and again what you want to do first give the value for evaluation of postfix expression 1 Two for tower of i, three for exit, and whatever your choice is there, that will be stored in the variable called choice. So let us say first you want to evaluate the postfix expression, and you are giving choice one, and what choice will have? Choice is containing a value of one now. Choice is containing a value of one. That means you want to evaluate the postfix expression. So what is in case one? If you want to evaluate the postfix expression, enter that postfix expression and store it in a array called character array. so for explanation purpose i will take a uh, 3 to star 5 to plus plus some postfix expression nothing but its infix form would be 3 star 2 plus 5 plus 2 right 3 to star 5 to plus plus so this was the infix it has been converted to postfix and this we are trying to evaluate now for completeness i am taking this for evaluation 3 to star 5 to plus plus this is our postfix expression which we, which we should solve 3 to 
star phi u2 plus plus and null at the end null at the end so this we should evaluate this post fix expression now we should evaluate this post fix expression so till do you encounter the null of the post fix expression that is till you encounter the null value where is the null value null value is here at the end so till you get the null value you go on repeating so these are the index values 3 4 5 6 and 7 till you get the null value you go on repeating what is that take the first character and store it in a symbol for every trace of the for loop we have to repeat all this we have to repeat all this take expression of i what is value of i value of i has been initialized to 0 Here I has been initialized to zero, so it is expression of zero now. I is zero, so what is expression of zero? Expression of zero is three. So take that three and store it in the symbol. So what is what symbol is having now? Symbol is having value called three because first value is three here. Three. Compare it. Whether symbol is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one, because single digit operands you should enter. You should your operands must be from zero to nine. This is the case. You need to push it onto the stack. This is just by subtracting the ASCII value of zero, because our arrays are character. Character form I should convert that to integer. So y minus zero minus ASCII value of zero converts the character symbol into integer form by subtracting ASCII value that is. 48 so it is essential because array we are talking about character array but we are taking operand in the form of integer if you want to convert that integer to character you should subtract this now if you want to convert that character to the integer you should subtract the ascii value zero right so what i will do this is true now this is true simply push that character onto the push that operand onto the stack so what is present in symbol push this symbol onto the stack what is present in symbol we have three so three will be pushed onto the stack else will not execute so else will not execute so we will go for next iteration of the for loop next iteration of the for loop so what is expression what happens increment the value of i by 1 what will be the new value of i now new value of i will be 1 so take the next symbol from the expression what is expression of i now expression of 1 is 2 so what will be present in symbol now symbol has a value of 2 expression of 2 again push it onto the stack by converting because it is a symbol is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 9 why because 2 is greater than or equal to 0 and it is less than or equal to 9 it is true what i'll do i'll simply push it onto the stack simply push it onto the stack go for next iteration perform i plus plus so what is the expression of i expression of i is star star is not equal to null condition is true enter into the for loop and take the next symbol what is the expression of i i was 2 here expression of 2 is star what is present in symbol in symbol i have star obviously this is not true it is if this is not true only two possibilities will be there in the expression either it is an operator or it is an operand in this case it is not an operand now it is an operator this is true if this is an operator what we do if you remember the theoretical procedure we pop two elements out from the stack first popped element will be operand 2 second popped element will be operand 1 same procedure take the topmost element from the stack and assign it to operand 2 so pop this element and assign it to operand 2 so operand 2 3 will be assigned to operand 1 see here pop the top of element assign it to operand 1 take the next element and assign it to operand top of element operand 2 next top of element operand 1 so what i will do for simplicity i will erase this Because two and three we have popped now, there is nothing left onto the stack now. Perform the required operation. It is just uh, simply for our print purpose we are giving. What we are doing? I am performing this operation. What is that? Two star three we are performing. This print is being displayed for understanding purpose. Next, perform call the operate function by passing this symbol. What is present in symbol? We have star operand one. What we have? Three. 
star 3 2 that means 3 into 2 we will invoke the operate function which is already told we will go to the definition of the operate function so what it will return the corresponding star is matched when star is matched what it will return it will simply return operand 1 into operand 2 it will simply return operand 1 into operand 2 so what will be result of operand 1 into operand 2 3 into 2 is how much 6 so what is present in answer now in answer i have 6 so push that 6 onto the stack so push that 6 onto the stack whatever theory it was explained only the code part is written for that so push this 6 onto the stack that is temporary result now temporary result is pushed onto the stack now let us go for the next iteration of the for loop because it is not at over for loop is not at over because still there are some more symbols in the in six expression for loop is not at over so increment the value of i what was the earlier value of i earlier value of i was two now the new value of i becomes three new value of i becomes three so what is present in three we have symbol five so get that what is present in uh, expression of 3? Expression of 3 has 5. That 5 is assigned to symbol. Is it true? Yes, this is satisfying. Why? Because 5 is greater than 0 and it is less than 9. So just push it onto the stack. 5 has been pushed onto the stack. Go for next iteration. Increment the value of i. i becomes 4. What is expression of 4? Expression of 4 is 2. So what will be there in symbol now? in symbol we will get something called 2 5 was there which is already processed and symbol we have right in symbol I will erase it to avoid confusion in symbol we have 2 now obviously that 2 is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 9 condition is true push that 2 onto the stack push that 2 onto the stack right Later perform incrementing i again, i value will become 5. What is expression of i? Expression of i is plus, copy that to symbol. Now what is present in symbol? In symbol we have plus. In symbol we have plus. So this is false. That means this is true. Plus means an operator. Whenever you get the operator, follow the simple procedure. What is that? Pop the topmost element from the stack, it will be operand 2. So what will be present in operand to know? I will erase these two for simplicity. So what will be present in operand two? Operand two will be topmost element. I will pop this and that will be operand two. Next element will be next element will be operand one. So these two elements are popped. Erase this, erase this. These two elements are popped. When you pop, perform the required of this is simply print the status what we are doing operate perform the operation and store it in the answer and push it again onto the stack what is the answer now symbol we have plus so addition of these two is what seven so that seven again we have to push it onto the stack seven we have to push it onto the stack seven has been successfully pushed value of i next value of i is r uh, next value of i is six so i has been incremented this i right i has been incremented to 6 again reiterate repeat the for loop so what is the value of i i is 6 what is the expression of 6 is not equal to null yes it is true expression of 6 is plus it is true so what is expression of 6 expression of 6 we have plus so what is symbol now expression of 6 is plus symbol has a value of plus now right when symbol has plus this is false else is true so whenever we get the operator what we do take the two topmost element and assign that to operand 2 and operand 1 i will erase these two what is the first topmost element 7 7 will become our operand 2 simple procedure 7 will become our operand 2 then 6 will become our operand 1 so these two have been popped out successfully then perform the required operation. What is the required operation? Plus is the required operation. So 7 plus 6 is how much? 7 plus 6 is 13. So push it onto the stack again 30. When you go for the next iteration of the for loop, i will be 7. 
the index value of i after erasing it will be 7 expression of 7 is null expression of 7 is not equal to null this is false this will become false for the first time and we will come out of the for loop and whatever is present on top of the stack that is what is the answer if you can see here pop stack what is present on top of the stack 13 is present top on top of the stack so 13 is final answer for that so 13 is final answer for that see here 3 into 2 is how much 6 6 plus 7 is 30 so 30 is the final answer so we have successfully evaluated the postfix expression we have successfully evaluated the postfix expression that was first part for the second part if you want to perform power of an a recursive procedure which is already explained for any given value of n for one disk what are the moments it will show for two disks what are the moments for three disks what are the moments so we are simply calling what we are simply calling the tower function so this tower function is being called for the definition of which is here which i shown here this definition will be called like how i explained just now with that logic and the theoretical foundation implementation which was given in the theoretical classes this is how the power of an function works if you want to remember the function please remember this function itself whatever is there in the lab program and this was the fifth lab program one sample execution is uh, shown here one two and three so for suffix expression is simply two three star five two plus plus Yes, the same example is taken here also for demonstration. Whatever I took for explanation, is it same? 3, 2, star, 5, 2, plus, plus, yes. The same example is taken here. But only thing is, uh, it is different. 2, 3, star, it is there. So, the alternative is showing. Right? If you want to go for choice 2, for number of disks, how many I have given? 3. So, what are the moments for 3? It shows move disks from the possible moments. A to C, then take from A to B. So these are these are the simple moments for disk three. For three disks, if you move, how many moments will it take? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these are the possible moments for disk three. So for better explanation, I hope uh, can you see this? Whatever I want to show here, can you see? Yes, sir. Yes, for 3 disks, what, what are the moments it says? Move the disk 1 from A to C. That means, this is the first disk, you have to take it, move it from A to C. Then from A to B. Then from C to B. Then from A to C. Then from B to A, then from B to C, then from A to C. So in the seven possible moves, we are able to move the disk from source to destination without violating the property of the tower of Hanoi. So that was the sample scenario of uh, tower of Hanoi. Um, that is your fifth lab program has been completed so two parts are there in this evaluation of an postfix expression and uh, solving the tower of an problem right this i'll take it in the next class because we don't have time now